Game Devs, lend me your ear. Do you know what are signals in Godot? Well, if you don't, signals are Godot's version of the observer pattern. They allow a node to send out a message that other nodes can listen for and respond to. This was taken straight out of the Godot documentation, and it was a really interesting read, so I do recommend that you check it out. Another very useful system in Godot is Autoloads, and Autoload is Godot's version of the singleton pattern. And in this video, we will look at how we can combine these two concepts to make flexible systems in our games. Okay, ready to catch the signal? Let's go. In this example, there's a spaceship that the player can move left and right, and there are some pickups that spawn into the game and move down the screen. There's also a label node that displays the number of pickups that the player collects. Our goal is to use autoloads in combination with signals to make it so that if the player collects three pickups, the game will be paused. Or another situation, if the player misses a pickup, the game will also be paused. The game is made up of a node, a sprite 2D to hold the background texture, the player, and an item spawner. I used a timer node to create the item spawner and attached a script to it. For now, we can ignore what's happening in the ready function. I made a function called spawn item, which as the name implies, spawns the item in the game. It uses a pack scene that can be set in the inspector and instantiates a new pickup at a random X position and fixed Y position in the game as a child of the item spawner. I also made a function called stop item that just calls the built-in pause function in Godot to pause the game. With the timer node selected, if we go to the inspector, I left auto start on so that the timer starts when the game starts, I set a wait time of 3 seconds and I left one shot disabled. That way, the timer will repeat at the end of the 3 seconds. Now here's where things get interesting. If we go to the node tab, we can see that Godot has a set of built-in signals for each node. The timer has a timeout signal that is emitted when the timer reaches the end. Let's quickly disconnect the signal so that I can show you how it's set up. To connect the signal, we just click on timeout and click connect. Then we choose the script we want to connect to. In this case, it's the item spawner. Then we just click connect. We can see that an on timer timeout function has been created. In this function, we will call the spawn item. That way, every time a timeout signal is emitted at the end of the timer, an item will be spawned into the scene. Now let's take a look at custom signals and autoloads. In the file system, I created a new folder called autoloads. Then I right clicked, create new script and call the script space game signals. In the script, to create your own custom signal, you just type signal and the name of the signal you wish to create. I created an unstop spawn signal. Now both scenes and scripts can be made autoloads. So to display the score, I just right click, create new scene and choose the user interface for the root type. Give the scene a name and click OK. I made the scene called score label. With the score label selected, in the inspector, I set the text to 00, zero and in the theme overrides, I changed the font size to 50 and repositioned the label to the top left of the screen. Then I created another script called add points. Now let's create our autoloads. We go to project, project settings, globals, autoload and click on the folder icon to browse to the folder. Then we click on each of the items we want to add as an autoload. Click open, then click add, and repeat this process for each of the items we want to add as an autoload. It's important to note that autoloads load into the game when the game starts from top to bottom. Autoloads make it easy to access classes, functions, or scenes across multiple scenes. Let's now create the add points script since we can use this to update the label scene. 
I will make an unready var called item score, cast it as an int and set it equal to zero. Then I will make a function called add item points. And in this function, I can add one to the item score. I can update the score label by accessing the score label dot text and setting it equal to the string value of the item score. I can also check if the score is equal to three and then emit the onstop spawn signal I created in the space game signal script by using the name of the signal and using the dot emit. Now we can go back to the score label and add a script. And in the ready function, we can update the text at the start of the game by setting the score label text equal to the string value of the item score in the add points autoload. Before we go on, let's take a look at how the autoloads get loaded in the game. When we play the game, if we go to the remote tab in the scene tree, we can see that the autoloads get added to the root of the scene tree in the order in which they were added in the project settings earlier. Now that we have all this set up, we need to actually call the add items points function somewhere to be able to increase the score. And for that, we need to take a look at the points pickup scene. It is made up of an area 2D node, a sprite 2D node, and a collision shape 2D node. The area 2D node has a built-in signal for area entered that emits a signal if another area enters the area on this node. We connect this signal to the code in a similar way as we did before with the timer node. We select the area entered, then click connect and choose the script that we want to connect to. Then click connect. An on area entered function will be added to the script. And it is in this function we use add points dot add item points to increase the score. And the last thing that we need to do is to pause the game when the score gets to 3 or if the player misses a pickup. And this is really really simple. We go to the item spawner script and in the ready function we first call spawn item so that an item spawns at the start of the game. Then we connect to the onstop spawn signal by using space game signal dot onstop spawn dot connect and pass in the function that you want which was stop item. To pause the game when the pickup leaves the play area, we just need to emit the onstop spawn signal when the pickup leaves the play area. And there you have it, a quick example of signals and autoloads. Thanks for watching. We discussed a lot today. Core mechanics and no gimmicks. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, give it a like. It really means a lot. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I upload another video. And speaking of other videos, why not check out another one of my videos here. This has been Diragu Games.